Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and today's lesson is on plant reproduction. The objectives for today's lesson will be, number one, compare and contrast sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Number two, describe the two stages in a plant's life cycle. Number three, how is fertilization in seedless plants different from fertilization in plants with seeds? And number four, what is the flower's role in sexual reproduction? Let's begin by talking about the life cycle of plants. This is a general diagram of how the plant lives. It starts out maybe as a seed that you, fought, you found or you bought at the store in a package. And the seed, in the right conditions, will begin to grow into a mature plant. There are different stages and different structures that are formed as that seed grows into a mature plant. And the first stage is usually when the seed begins to grow roots. Those roots help to anchor that plant into the soil so that that plant can be stable and be able to grow properly. Now once those roots are formed, we move on to uh, the seed developing leaves because those leaves are going to be able to catch the sunlight uh, energy that the plant needs in order to live. Now once those leaves are developed and a stem is formed, you will start to see what we call a small plant or kind of like a adolescent plant. Um, it's no longer a baby seed. It has some leaves and stems and roots, but it's not fully mature. It still has some growing to do. And over time, again, under the right conditions, a mature plant can form. Now, depending on the type of of plant or the species of plant. Mature plants can grow very large, they can become big as trees, or they may uh, remain kind of small. However, all plants have a general range in how big they can grow. Now, let's talk about the different types of ways that plants can reproduce. Reproduction basically means being able to make your own Kind, being able to make more of your own kind of species. And in order to be a living organism, they have to be able to reproduce. Otherwise, the organism is going to become extinct. Plants have been here for a long time, so they know how to reproduce. And they reproduce in several ways. The first way we'll talk about is asexual reproduction. That is when a plant can form its own kind from a part of itself. What do I mean by that? Well, at this down here at this diagram, you'll see a plant, and this plant has stems and leaves, and this particular plant, if you were to cut it and take that cutting and plant that cutting into some soil and add some water and maybe uh, you know expose it to some sunlight, give it all of the right conditions in order for it to grow, that cutting of that original plant will become a new plant. Now asexual means that there's no sex cells required. And uh, the advantage of going through asexual reproduction is that you can produce large numbers of plants and little time with the exact same genetic makeup as the parent plant. This original plant will be considered the parent plant. And the parent plant and the new plant are going to be exact copies of the same thing, just like they talk about, uh, scientists may talk about cloning in animals. Uh, cloning would be producing the same animal from another animal. This is what's occurring here in asexual reproduction. 
There are certain types of plants that use asexual reproduction in order to produce new plants, and those would be things like grasses, dandelions, and other weeds. Potatoes also go through asexual reproduction, and strawberries. If you've ever seen a potato and it has the little bud uh, over time, it starts to like sprout this little bud that comes off of the potato. That would be a form of asexual reproduction because that bud can break off and make another potato.